Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I'd like to start out in Jeremiah 1, verse number 7. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, because he knew I was an old man. Uh, <laughs> For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. So here I am, I'm not afraid of any of your faces. Na, 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 na. <laughs> all right, now for the seriousness. <laughs> Which way are you headed? Faith is not a one-time sensational event in one's life. Neither is it a state of moral and spiritual perfection to which a handful of super saints attain. Faith is a dynamic, lifelong journey that each believer is on. At any given moment, we are either moving towards God or away from him. The people in Jeremiah's day stood under God's judgment because they turned away from him, just like we are in the United States and the whole rest of the world. Um, they went backwards and not forward. Rather than cultivate a growing relationship with the Lord based on sustained faithful obedience, they went their own way and followed the doctrines of their evil hearts. May that not be true of us. The only way to make progress in your journey of faith is to keep moving forward, forward towards God as best you know how. You may fall and you may stumble, but we are to get back up and go towards God rather than away from him. And Paul described it in um, Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Forget these things which are behind and reaching forward towards the things that are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Now, Throughout the book of Jeremiah, it tells many different things that uh, were going on then and we can relate to now, like I mentioned. Um, in Jeremiah 8, 11, and 12, we see, For they healed the, the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace. When there is no peace, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Were they ashamed? No, they call it gay pride. How can you go from being, should be ashamed, to calling it pride? This is the world we live in. We have to be very careful of this. And it says, no, they were not ashamed, nor did they know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall in a time of punishment. And we're faced right now that the time of punishment to the whole world is approaching us. So we have to pay attention to what God is telling us through reading our Bible and studying it. Um, in channel... in Chapter 9, verses 2 and 3. I have a little subtitle in mind. I don't know if all the Bibles say this, but it says it's Jeremiah's sorrow. Now, in verses 2 and 3, it states, Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place for travelers, that I might leave my people and go from them, for they are adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men, 
and they bow down and have their tongues, oh, their bow, they have tongues bent for lies. They are not valiant for the truth on the earth. So in verses 7 through 9, it says, Therefore, says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will find them and try them. For how shall I deal with the daughter of my people? Their tongue is an arrow shot out. It speaks deceit. People lie to us all the time and praying that we don't lie back to them or anyone else. It says in verse 23 and 24... We're just going to stay in Jeremiah quite a bit. But uh, in verse 23 and 24, says, Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, nor let the mighty man glory in his might, nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, let us glory in God, not ourselves. We're nothing. We're pieces of dust. And we're going to return to the earth. But God is God forever, and he's mighty and powerful. Let's glory that he has called us and knows us, and he shares his love with us. It says, uh, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight. Let us be a delight to God our Father. In chapter 13, verses 15 and 16. Hear and give ear. Do not be proud. For the Lord has spoken. Give glory to the Lord your God before he causes darkness. And before your feet stumble on the dark mountains, and while you are looking for light, that would be Jesus Christ, the light of the world, he turns it into a shadow of death and makes it a dense darkness. So there's coming a time when the word of God will be pretty much shut down, not completely. Some of us will be underground still having churches and congregating on the Sabbath day and waiting for them to come and get us. But uh, but that's why we were told to look for that little place in the wilderness that we can pray that God will take us away from all that. Um, in chapter 15, we get a really good one. In verse 16, And your word was to me, oh, and your words were found, and I ate them. Your words were found, and I ate them. And your word gave, and your word was to me joy and a rejoicing of my heart. This is the relationship we have to cultivate with God, because he's offering it to us. We need to find his word and make it the joy of our lives. Forsaking some of the other things that we think are joyful and pleasures of this world, we have to give these things up and take more time for the word of God. In, in number 17, 10, 9 and 10, it says, And the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So that would tell us that if we're left on our own without God in our life, we're deceiving ourselves. And it's not hard to do because it says it is wicked. We're wicked. The way of the world is deceiving and wicked. And if we don't have God lifting us out of it, we're stuck in the mire and the muck. Uh, in 18... Number 11 and 12. 
Now, therefore, speak to the men of the United States and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am fashioning a disaster and devising a plan against you. Return now. Draw close to God. Return now. And every one from his evil ways, yes, and we still all have evil ways. Maybe one of these don't, but the rest of us do. Um, I know I have plenty of evil ways, <laughs> and I repent every day several times, but that's just how it is. I have to keep working on it. Um, and they said, that is hopeless. Now they're being told to repent and turn back to God, and they're saying, it's hopeless. So we will walk according to our own plans, and we will everyone obey the dictates of his evil heart. Those people are actually telling Jeremiah, no, we're going to do it our way. We don't care what you're saying. You're a prophet of God, but we don't care. Um, in 18... Eleven and twelve. Oh, I did that. Um, in eighteen eighteen, it said, Then they said, This is in the New King James. Come and let us devise plans against Jeremiah, for the law shall not perish from the priests. Now I'm going to read out of the MGV, and it says, Let us devise plans against Glenn. Let us not give heed to any of his words. We will not turn off our TV sets. We will not... F we will not... F we will not fast or read the word as a true joy. Now, if any of you are having a problem getting into the word, studying, giving more time to a God, here's the plan. All right, if you're having a problem, ask God to give you a love for his word. If he gives you this love, he will give you the love for his word. If you ask, because it tells us anything we ask in Jesus' name, if it's according to his will, we get it. And here we are, we're asking to love his word, and we have to get it, because he said he'd give it to us. All right, now everyone picks up their songbooks, puts it in front of your stomach, because here comes the gut shot. <laughs> this was the last time I talked, I told you about the gut shot, all right. Here's the gut shot. After he gives you the love for his word, you have to dig in and eat of the spiritual food that he's giving you. Eat, eat, eat. There is no sin in being a glutton for the word of God. Eat. Now, there was a time that I did watch television and I remember this commercial, and it showed a mechanic standing by a car. And it was a commercial for oil change. And he said, you can pay me now to get the oil change. And then it showed a picture of a car, and the motor was smoking, and, and it blew the motor up. And he says, or you can pay me later. This is what God is telling us right now. You can pay me now. Or you can pay me later. We get the choice. Give up your TV. Pay God that time. Follow God and be blessed. What's more important than serving God? Thanks for the vodka. <laughs>